What is up, short doggers? This is Tudor Leonte, and today I have the pleasure to talk with UFC featherweight fighter and Dars Choke master, Mr. Julian Erosa. Hello, Julian. Welcome back on Short Dog. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, brother. Thank you for having me on. Um, you are scheduled to face Steven Peterson on, on the upcoming uh, UFC card on February the 5th. Um, let's talk a little bit about your upcoming fight. Um, what do we expect from your next opponent? Uh, you know, I think Steven Peterson brings, uh, you know, toughness, durability, and the willingness to fight to the fight. Uh, I think skillfully, I'm better than him. Uh, I'm bigger than he is. You know, I have the range on him as well. Uh, I think my grappling, my wrestling, and my striking ability is above his. But uh, what he does bring to the table, like I said, was, you know, his toughness and his willingness to fight. So we definitely got to be prepared for uh, kind of a dogfight sometimes. But I think that that's what I bring to the table as well. Um, I think uh, Jordan and uh, the, the uh, Sean Woodson fight are good examples of that where, uh, you know, maybe it was a close fight in the, in the, in the early goings. But um, as the fight progressed, I think, uh, you know, I make it into a little bit more of a dogfight and, uh, and, and able to um, capitalize on that towards the end of the fight. I wish to talk with you for a little while. And the reason why is that you don't like decisions at all. Uh, how, how would you describe your killer instinct? You know, I don't necessarily think it's an instinct. I think it's just something that we, I'm always looking for, you know, I'm never, regardless of like how the rounds are going, I'm always thinking to finish, you know, I'm always looking for a knockout finish. I'm always looking for a submission because uh, nowadays, especially man, these decisions are, you know, you know, they're questionable. Some of these uh, decisions that happen, uh, you know, you don't want to be on the wrong side of a bad decision. And, um, you know, for me, I'd rather just take it into my own hands. And I think if I have the ability to finish, I might as well go for it. And, uh, and I think that's what the fans want to see anyways, you know, people uh, get, you know, and it's, you know, there's a fine line people want to win the fight. They want to make their second paycheck. Uh, they want to keep, you know, they want to keep their winning streak alive. They want to, uh, you know, keep their job with the UFC. So some people want to be a little bit more careful. And if they can win, you know, kind of a boring decision, they might do that or be more apt to do that. But for me, I've always been, you know, throw caution to the wind. And whether I'm winning or I'm losing, I'm try I don't like to see 15 minutes. I think, uh, I think if you see 15 minutes um, and you have any energy left in you, I think it's a waste. You know, I think you should go out there and uh, if you go 15 minutes and you just couldn't finish a guy, you should be completely exhausted. You shouldn't be able to hardly stand anymore. So for me, I'm always pushing to get the finish. And, and pushing to, uh, uh, you know, just keep the pressure on somebody as well. I'm not trying to win a boring decision. You look particularly vicious on the canvas, and 12 of your victories have come by submission. Um, yeah. I introduced you as the Darce Choke master because your latest uh, victory ha have come by Darce Choke. But uh, what's your favorite submission, if you have would, one, of course? I would say definitely my Darce Choke is... Uh, not necessarily my favorite uh, submission, but everybody, everybody that grapples or fights or does any kind of martial arts has a you know a technique that they know mentally uh, and physically that they're they can say that they're like pretty close to a hundred percent, and that's the one thing for me is the Darce choke. Uh, there's other submissions I'm really good at as well, but the Darce choke, as soon as I lock it up on somebody, uh, and I'm not gonna say I'm a hundred percent because obviously. You know, there's 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 times that you don't finish it, but for me, uh, especially towards the end of a fight, if I can lock that Darce choke up, you know, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be very hard for them to get out and survive it. So uh, the Darce choke is something I like to go for uh, throughout the fight because I know if I lock it up, it's gonna be hell for them to get out of it, and um, it's one of the submissions in my own game that I feel as confident as possible to do. Uh, where have you spent your training camp for the upcoming fight with uh, Peterson? Uh, the last four, I would say the last four and a half years, uh, I've, I've lived in Las Vegas and uh, I've trained at 10th Planet um, in Las Vegas and also Extreme Couture. Uh, 
So, and that's a good thing about Vegas. It's like, there's so many gyms here and there's so much good training and coaching and, and uh, so many uh, good training partners that come in and out of town that, uh, you know, it just makes it um, ideal for, uh, for UFC fighters, especially if we have the uh, UFC performance Institute and they take care of you over there as well. So, uh, and then I get to fight here as well. So I get to basically fight in my own backyard. <laughs> I'm at home watching the fights, you know, before the fights are even done after I fight, it's crazy. You know, I, I fight at the apex. I get out, I do all my interviews, everything. I do my physical, I hit a hop in the car. I come home and I'm still watching uh, the last couple of times I've still watched fights at my house after I fought on that card. So it's, it's pretty surreal how that works out, but I really enjoy uh, fighting at the apex. They just they get you in, they get you out. And, uh, um, and then you can kind of move on with your day. Uh, but for me, the last, you know, obviously my, my training camp has been here in Vegas. And so uh, I've been at 10 planet and at extreme couture. Uh, now that you mentioned extreme couture, um i guess you watched ufc 270 and i would like to ask your thoughts on uh francis Ngannou performance against cyril gun oh man he uh he looked incredible uh it's funny because i have a i have a buddy that trains you know uh trains with me and uh he's french and he loves cyril gun and so obviously <laughs> you know a lot of us you know we're rooting for uh francis Ngannou because you know he trains at extreme and So there was a little bit of a rivalry there, but uh, he looked really good um, and not necessarily in the striking. Um, he looked a lot better in the grappling, you know, the grappling and the wrestling. And that was a side to Francis. Nobody thought uh, that he excelled at. And I think he was able to um, really work on that hole in his game and surprise Cyril Gaon by taking him down and holding him down and, and controlling him and being able to uh, maybe out grapple him a little bit. I think, I think Cyril made a, uh, a mistake by, you know, falling back for that heel hook. Um, he was on top and he kind of made that mistake. But besides that mistake, I think uh, Francis uh, capitalized on, uh, on, on some of his uh, newer, newer grappling moves that he's learned. I know that you obviously follow different programs, but as a fellow teammate, who, did you expect him to be that good at wrestling? Yeah, well, like you said, you know, we're, you know, we're two different size guys, you know, I'm a featherweight and he's a heavyweight. So the dude weighs over a hundred pounds more than me on weigh-in day. So uh, obviously I'm not training with him in any capacity except for being at the same gym. Um, but, uh, you know, just like anybody else, just being an avid fan of uh, the UFC and watching, you know, fights and, and seeing, um, you know, the one, the first fight that he had with Steve A, you know, the hole that he had in his game was a little bit of his cardio and his wrestling and grappling ability. And so uh, Cyril Gaon coming in, you know, being a well-rounded heavyweight, probably the best well-rounded heavyweight in the UFC. Um, you know, you were, everybody was kind of wondering about that hole in uh, Francis's game. And so, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a big win for him. And it was, it was even bigger to show off his ability to uh, counter wrestle and counter grapple. Um, did you change something in your uh, training routine for this upcoming fight? Uh, I, uh, a little bit. Um, I think the last, like, uh, even the, the Jordan fight, before I got the Jordan fight, there was like uh, four or five weeks where I kind of switched my sparring around, where before I would spar on the sparring days at Extreme, but the problem with that was uh, I wasn't getting the cage every time. And uh, if you fight in a cage, you should be training in a cage, but there's only two cages there. So uh, if people, you know, there's other guys getting ready for fights and they need the cage too. So um, I started sparring at a different time so I could get the cage every time. And I could also go to the UFC performances too. They have a couple cages there as well, but uh, that's the, the main difference is, uh, is I switched my sparring around so I could get as much cage time as possible. Uh, and, and spar 100% inside of a cage. You know, you fight in a cage, you should be sparring in a cage and training in a cage. So for me, that was one of the biggest things um, because people forget, you know, when you spar in an open mat area, uh, there's, you know, you can't cut people off the same way you can in a cage. Um, you know, uh, you can't, you know, do the same type of movements. You can't, or, you know, you're a little bit more limited when you're in a cage and you need to be aware of the cage surrounding as well. So, uh, For me, that was one of the biggest things, and I've done it all this camp as well, and uh, and it's it's made a huge difference for me. 
I, I noticed on, you know, from the photos on your social media accounts that you spend a lot of time with uh, Jorge Alcala. Um, is he your main sparring partner? Yeah, so Georgia, Georgia is from where I'm from in Washington State. Uh, he came up, you know, kind of towards the tail end of me being uh, training in Washington. And so uh, when I moved, he decided to make the same move about six months later. So he's been in Vegas for about four years and uh, we train side by side and He's been my number one training partner from, you know, since day one here in Vegas. So, uh, uh, and he's, you know, he's a tiny bit smaller than Peterson, um, but uh, he gives me hell in the cage, man. The guys, uh, uh, and, and we spar so much, we train so much together, we know each other's tricks. So we have to kind of really layer uh, what we do to each other to really get away with things. And so um, it makes us a bit more mentally sharp uh, on top of being physically sharp. Uh, for these fights, you know, so uh, I think I honestly feel like if George went in there and fought Peterson, George would beat him. So uh, I think George is a really good look for me uh, getting ready for this fight. What should fans expect from you in your next fight? Man, you know, uh, the Jordan fight, I kind of called out. I wanted to get a darts choke on him. Um, I think I can do the same thing with uh, Peterson like I did uh, Jordan. I think I can kind of beat him up on the feet and then uh, eventually get it to the ground and get a submission. Um, But for me, uh, what I can guarantee is uh, is that I'm going to be going for a finish 100%. I know Peterson's going to be doing the same. So uh, for the fans, I don't. I want to expect to see a 15-minute fight. The card on which you're fighting is headlined by the clash between Jack Hermanson and Sean Strickland. I would like to hear from you your pick for this fight. Oh, I got to go with Sean Strickland. He also trains at Extreme Couture, uh, and um, you know he's a, he's a good friend of mine. And uh, I mean, the dude's kind of a psychopath, uh, but in a good way, man. You gotta, you gotta be a little bit crazy when you find people for a living, and uh, and he's bring uh, and he's the epitome of that. So uh, I gotta go with Strickland. Uh, I love his style, and I love his uh, his attitude about fighting. Um, is he as much intense in real life as it seems on <laughs> social media? No, not at all, really. I mean, uh, he does say and he acts a little bit funny sometimes. Uh, he's his own character, obviously, but um, he's a really nice guy. I think most fighters are. Uh, I think um, he just has the uh, uh, propensity for some violence. I think he just loves to get in the cage and fight and beat people up. I think that's a side of him, but uh, on the other side, he's a, he's a nice, easygoing dude outside of the cage uh, from what I've seen. So um, uh, I think people kind of take what he says uh, wrong sometimes and Sometimes he says the wrong thing, but uh, I think you have to be, like I said, you had to be a little crazy to be fighting people for a living and, and he's just good at uh, embracing that. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for your time today. Before I let you go, do you have any last message? Uh, just obviously, thanks for having me on, brother. And then uh, I can't wait to be on the next show. Thank you again for your time. Best of luck with your upcoming fight. And hopefully I'll hear again from you in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much, brother. Have a good have day. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.